Hi, so welcome to another YouTube video. Um, this one's going to be on the uh, the inverse discrete time Fourier transform. Um, and we're going to be talking about the delta function. So last video we proved that the DTFT of the delta function is just equal to 1. And now I want to show you how visually um, and mathematically the inverse DTFT of 1 is equal to the delta function. And how do we prove that? Well, let's start with the definition of the IDTFT. So to get your time domain sequence, you have 1 over 2 pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of your frequency domain function, frequency domain function times your uh, complex exponential e to the j omega n d omega. So if this is our x e to the j omega, that is going to be our frequency function, frequency domain function, then what we need to do is just plug that in to the equation and solve. So what we're going to have is 1 over 2 pi times the integral of negative pi to pi, 1 times e to the j omega n d omega. Let me fix that. Yeah, and uh, we can really ignore this one because it's really just placed in front of here. And now we can integrate. You can solve this integral by doing a, a basic u substitution. So if we do u is equal to j omega n and du is equal to j n, then we have the integral of e to the u du. To get everything to cancel, we're going to have this j n out here. And that's just equal to 1 over j n because we can pull that 1 over j n outside times e to the j omega n, plug u back in, right, plus c, don't forget our constants. Okay, and so what we have now is I'm going to ignore the constant because they're going to cancel out in the evaluation of the integral from negative pi to pi, right? So we have 1 divided by 2 pi times 1 over j n this, then we have e to the j omega n, I'm pulling this j n out actually, negative pi to pi. Okay, so let's expand that, and we're going to put these two together, so we get 1 over 2 pi j n, get my camera to focus here, there we go times e to the j pi n minus e to the negative j pi n. Okay, and that's what we have. But if we go over here, we're going to look at Euler's formula. So Euler's equation, and he said that e to the j omega is equal to cosine omega plus j sine omega. Um, additionally, e to the negative j omega is equal to cosine omega minus j sine omega. And uh, if you've worked with Euler's uh, equ equations before, you, you would know that there's ways that you can isolate the cosine and the sine. And that's what we're going to look at right now. And to isolate, let's say we just wanted to know what sine, what the sine omega would equal in terms of these complex exponentials. Well, we can see we have here these two cosines, and to get those to cancel out, if we times both sides or multiply both sides by negative one times negative one, then we have negative cosine plus j sine omega, and we are going to add these two. 
or add all of these two, the cosines are going to cancel out. And so we're going to have e to the j omega minus, and this is coming from this column right over here, minus e to the negative j omega is equal to 2j sine omega. Uh, if we desire to divide both sides by 2j, then we just have sine omega is equal to this equation right here, which is in terms of complex exponentials. And omega can really be whatever we want it to be. And if we look at our function that's inside these brackets right here, we say, oh, that's the just the numerator of this equation. So what we would need is this 2j, which we can find from this. So if we take out, if we go 1 divided by pi n, and we place back in the 2j's and distribute them evenly, we would have e to the j pi n minus e to the negative j pi n over 2j. And that in there is just the sign of whatever's right here after the j or, or standing in for the omega pi n. Okay, so that's really cool. So then what we end up is we have 1 over pi n times sine pi n, which is equal to sine pi n over pi n. If you've worked with maybe FIR filters before, you uh, would notice, or if you just know um, some some um, uh, functions used in, in digital signal processing, you'd realize that this is actually a, a sync function. So sync function. And a sync function is it's kind of like a like a piecewise function. Um, so if we have sync x is equal to sine pi x over pi x, and this is going to be for all x not equal to zero. Okay, and it's going to be one when x is equal to zero. Traditionally, uh, if we plug in x is equal to zero to this, we'd have sine of zero, and sine of zero is just zero, so we'd have zero divided by whatever this is, which is zero. And, um, or we'd have zero divided by zero, which is undefined, so they define it here as one. Okay, and if we take a look and we graph that, this is what a graph of that looks like. You can see it in the blue line. But this is still continuous time, right? There's no samples. This is f of x. Um, it's a smooth waveform. And there's no, there's no discrete time. And discrete time is the, the DTFT. That's what the DT stands for, is discrete time right so if we say well our function really was sine pi n over pi n okay and n is always going to be an integer so I'm going to scoot this down n is an integer Right, so one, two, etc. Can't see that, but I wrote etc. That's always going to make the numerator zero, and I'll show you why. If we have sine of pi times one mm -hmm. divided by pi times one, that's just zero over pi, which is equal to zero. Okay, same thing with sine, now we're just going to look at the numerator, 2 pi is equal to 0, sine 3 pi is equal to 0. Even if we look at the negatives, we have sine uh, negative 3 pi, right? That's going to be equal to 0. So it's going to go down and down and down for all n, 
for all integers n not equal to 0. Okay, now what about when n is equal to 0? Well, we defined that back here. And we said where x or n, when your variable is equal to 0, the sine function is just 1. So basically what we're going to have is our function is just going to be 0 for n not equal to 0 and 1 when n is equal to 0. Okay, so if we graph that on here, we will use the red pen. And what we're looking at is n for, for integers. So we have 1, 2, 3. Those are integers. So what we're going to go is we're going to go here, 2, 0, 3, it's at 0, negative 1, it's at 0, negative 2, it's at 0, negative 3, it's at 0. And you can see this is almost like sampling the sync function, the continuous time sync function at integer values of x. And now the one most important part is the 1 at n equals 0, right? So we can't forget that. So at 1, or at n equals 0, we have 1. Okay? And so that is the discrete time version of the sync function when n is an integer, which it always is because it's a sample. And this also is exactly the same graph as a delta function, right? Because a delta function, discrete time version of a delta function, is 0 for all n not equal to 0 and 1 for n equal to 0. And that matches exactly with this, right? So here we're going from, this is continuous time and discrete time just shows us that our discrete time version is the same as the delta function. And that proves to us that the inverse DTFT of one is equal to the delta function in discrete time, the delta of n. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, you can leave a like or a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will hope to have some more videos up soon. So thanks.